And today we're going to take a look at a modifier that doesn't exist in any other app except 3D Studio Max and see how we can replicate these in any other application by simply using Blender. Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. So today we're going to take a look at a very, very simple question which has to do with someone migrating from 3D Studio Max over to Blender. Just asking, how do you work with the slice tool? I mean, since there's no slice tool available, that has to do with how slicing actually works in 3D Studio Max. The question is, how do you deal with that? Now, 3D Studio Max is the only tool I know as at now, except maybe there's a modifier in, you know, Houdini, which I don't know about. But 3D Studio Max is the only tool I know as at now that do have this particular kind of slicing. Every other tool that I've known so far just has a polygonal slicing. And of course, there is a way which you can address these and actually find, you know, the same kind of results that you can get or maybe even get something better. But then, of course, let's just get right into it. So directly right here, we have 3D Studio Max open. So what I'm going to do is just simply hold down control, right click and go over and select the box. Now, with the box selected, I'm just going to go through and create a very simple box. Now, the reason why we're creating this is so that we can have a geometry we can play with. Then from here, I would go over to, you know, the modifier and simply bring out the slice modifier. And you can see that we have the slice here. If I simply move this all the way up, you see nothing really happens. So for those who don't know how to work with this in 3D Studio Max, all you have to do is select this. And now if you move this all the way up, you still notice nothing happens. Nothing is happening because we've not told the slice what to do. By just simply clicking remove top, we can get that out. And if I click here and say remove bottom, we can get this out. This right here is uh how should i put it this right here is totally different all right this makes a lot of sense if you're trying to rapidly create certain things or if you want to animate some sort of review if you're into motion graphics or at the same time if you want to you know use this for some kind of modeling this makes a lot of sense because right now by just simply doing this you can throw in a simple shell and i guess this is one of the reasons why the you know the question is coming you can throw in a very simple shell like this and you have yourself something like this so there is a huge range of things that you can do with this you can still go ahead and animate this you know we can go ahead and animate this and move this all the way to this point and by just simply going through here clicking on the slice we can move this all the way to this point and there we have it so you can see we can go through and animate this so the way you can do this in any other 3d app is by using something called boolean all right now it sounded like it was going to be something miraculous but no so it's just by simply using boolean so i'm just going to open up blender here and with blender open you can notice that we have a simple cube and i would make another copy so by simply making another copy what i can do here is come over to the modify and click here and you can see how much modifiers we have of course some of these modifiers make so much sense because certain things are baked into certain things all right certain things are baked into certain things unlike 3d studio max where we have a whole lot of things exposed and some of them are really not you know uh being used all right so i'm going to just simply come over here and go over to the boolean section and simply select this and click here now by simply doing this i can now select this and start making a boolean out of this now by default you would probably notice that there's a boolean happening because we have this but if you don't know that there is this modifier you kind of think that it's an overlapping geometry going on so for us to see this we're going to simply use the insert so that we can see something going on here and you can also see this at the same time you still think for some reason that this is an overlapping geometry going on all right you probably don't really get that you know slicing or boolean effect going on by simply doing this so what we can do now is we can go over here select this object which is the default cube which is cube one and simply make it invisible now if we make this invisible select this right here and set that to difference you start noticing that we have this all right so now i think this would you know kind of make sense but then if you want to go ahead and start creating something that is hollow empty probably you want to use this for something totally different that is going to take you an extra step because right now you may have to come over here apply this as it is you may have to come over here apply this then dive directly into 
the edit poly now select one or two maybe three and go through with the simple delete all right so with this way you can start creating this which is an extra step of course you can still do i mean uh, a couple of animations using this thing but i don't really think the animation thingy with this might be as flexible as that of 3d studio max probably depending on your skill set but then i think the one from 3d studio max will definitely get you to where you want to go now if you're also considering that all right since you know you can do boolean here what about doing the same kind of boolean effect directly in 3d studio max the fact that you have your modifiers and you can still interact with your modifiers using the widgets that you have here you know contrary to dialing numbers this is this is just pretty it's pretty interesting you know it's just really really nice and you can just simply go in there and start dialing things up and down just makes a lot of sense all right so if you go over to 3d studio max and you want to redo this same thing so i'm just going to come over here and get a brand new scene all right so we need a brand new scene right now i'm just also going to hold down control right click and add a very simple box i'm just going to drag this box all the way up to this point and i'm also going to do the same thing here i'm just going to move this about this point and by holding down shift you can make a copy and i'm also going to state this copy as a copy all right and just simply say okay i'll also come over here just to make sure that everything is how it is so by simply coming here and moving this to a different point what you can do so let's just rotate around what you can do is you can come over here and go down to this part where you have your compound object so if you go in here and select this object right now you can go over to the boolean and by simply going over to boolean i can come over and simply select subtract or let's go with insert or probably subtract so i'm going to go through and select subtract so by simply selecting subtract i would come over here and click on add operands and simply add this one now by simply adding this right now i can now go through and start moving this you would probably not see this effect right now so i'm just going to undo this a little bit more and simply move this right in here and probably let's just get this about this point so go back here you see the you know right now it's here as a modifier but funny enough if you type the word b here you don't see anything that looks like boolean all right if you go through and just keep typing the word b here you don't see anything that looks like boolean which i really think you know that the guys from autodesk working on 3d studio max should you know do well to add this i just feel like there's a whole lot of things that needs to be done on this particular tool all right so i'm just going to go through and select this right now and select um uh, what's it called subtract yeah, subtract and go over to add operand and simply add this operand right now so by simply doing this you can now see that we have uh this stuff so if i rotate around and come over here i would not be so able to you know do all of that miraculous magic that we can do in blender right so in blender we can simply use the widget and move things around so this would give you an extra edge if you want to animate boolean or if you want to animate something that has to do with this but in 3d studio max the only way which you can work with this tool right now is by coming down to this section and start pushing these parameters and for the life of me this is something that uh, i don't know i don't know you know a huge thanks to the guys at blender and also maya for and also houdini and cinema 4d for coming to the rescue of everyone compared to what we have here so here if you want to start moving things around you would definitely want to move things by using parameters this would slow you down a bit but it simply gets the job done all right this would get the job done so you can use this you know in place of working with um the slice i would really appreciate it if the guys at blender foundation can do something like that probably introduce a slice tool there's also a couple of tools in you know 3d studio max that i really wish to see come over to other tools like the melt for example all right i don't think we have that in blender so if i come over here and check all right so i don't think we have that in blender and there is a couple of modifiers that exist in 3d studio max that i would really like to see in some other 3d apps probably maya blender houdini and so on and so forth and of course if you want to play with the modifiers in 3d studio max you can go through and get 3d studio max from autodesk.com for free and you know apply for the three years license which you can get for free as both a student an instructor or maybe as a hobbyist and at the same time you can also get blender totally for free it's always been free so you can also get blender and you know do a bit of compare and, and contrast so if there are things that you want to get implemented in the new versions of blender coming out i think these are things that you guys can and i think these are things that the community can actually talk about and see if they can get them implemented in blender and this is about it guys i would like to know what you guys think about this 
in the comment section of course the slice tool is amazing too and it wouldn't hurt a bit to see them come over to blender and yes that's about it guys i would like to know what you guys think about this in the comment section and if you like this video you learned something from this go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here it's going to be amazing if you can hit the subscribe button and also turn on the notification so that you don't miss the next video or the next update and until i see you guys again with the tutorial updates free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks things like this peace